Sally, okay, thank you. Okay, okay. morning members, welcome to the pension board meeting today. Uh, apologies to start with, please, Sally. I no, don't okay. have any. Okay, so the declaration of interest number two, any members got any declarations of interests? Nope, nope. So we go on to chairman's announcements. I've got two announcements that to make members start off. We'll start with one first. I'd like to welcome Councillor David White to the Pensions Board. Uh, I believe David uh, is on the Pension Board of either Swansea Council or of the University. Not sure which one it is. Swansea Council. Swansea Council. Swansea Council. That's great. Uh, so welcome, David. Uh, and the other announcement I got, I'd like to pass over to uh, Dave King, if possible. Dave King sent me an email. He would like to announce something. So. Over to you, Dave. Thank you, Chair. Good morning, members. Um, yeah, I just felt it might be appropriate for us to mark as a, a mark of respect. There's been a number of um, bereavements of retired members down my neck of the woods. There were three, in fact, from Station One Bridgend, um, going back to one particular member who's joined the service in Glamorgan in around about 90, early 1960s. So I just wondered if I could... Uh, if I could um, have this little facility just to have a minute for, in, in, as a mark of respect for these these past members, I quite That's agree okay with, with you. Yeah, I quite agree with that. So, members, we have uh, a bit of silence for the for the members who've passed away recently. Thank you ever so much. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you, members. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you. We we'll go on to, <coughs> excuse me, on to item four to receive the minutes of the last meeting. So we go on to page the meeting uh, on the teams and hundreds of years ago, another 19th of October. So page okay. one, page two, page three, page four. Are members happy with those uh, minutes, please? Uh, Chairman, yes, uh, yes, yes. Yeah, just on the uh, page four, resolved that members noted the noted. It's not nitpicking, just for um, it's not accuracy, just a bit of extra typing. Members noted the noted the performance data, just for the record, so that it goes in neat and tidy. Which which page is that, please, Val? I'm um, sorry, on that um, at um, bullet point twenty three, resolved that. <clears throat> Right, okay, thank you ever so much. Got a couple of other notes. Okay, thank you, members. Okay, we're going to item. <clears throat> that excuse me, I've got a bit of a bit of a bad chest I have. But I haven't got COVID, I can show you where that. You can't pick it up for me anyway. So we're going to item number five, the local pension board, firefighters pension, uh page seven. Uh is that Alison and Ian, is it? The start of that one? Alison? Yeah. Yeah, thanks, Chair. I'll ask Ian to talk us through um, the KPIs and then um, perhaps we'll pick up some questions at the end, if that's okay. Yes, yes I'm happy please. with that. Yes, yes, yes. Ian, over to you. Nice to see you, Ian. Oh, I can't hear you, Ian. Sorry about that. That's okay. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, as with previous meetings, uh, the following agenda item includes the service standards undertaken recently by the uh, pension service on behalf of the fire service, as well as some of the key activity. Included in Appendix 1 uh, are two tables, um, which include the service standards agree as agreed in the uh, service level agreement around some of the key activity. There has been some activity there you'll see in the November. Whilst this provides uh, all all the information from April onwards, uh, you'll see there's, there was some activity there in November, which was the data extract for this particular committee. 
And down the side, provide some commentary around some of the case loads that we've done during that specific period and some of our activity. Uh, members will note uh, from the appendix, really, that there, that there still remains sort of a high level of compliance in respect to those key service standards um, that we've delivered during the period. We, we will continue to monitor those and ensure that uh, our service standards uh, are met, met where possible. If I move to Appendix 2 on page 3, um, there's some information there in relation to uh, data quality. Um, this is to provide members with the reassurance um, that um, the data held for um, fire service members is appropriate. Um, as part of the scheme regulator um, report in the scheme annual report, we are required to provide um, information regarding the data we hold and the quality of that data. And this is a scoring me mechanism which was reduced, introduced a, couple, a number of years ago. And we provide this information on an annual basis. So we see there, uh, for comparison purposes, I've provided the statistics we provided to the regulator in 2019, and the table below provides the data analysis um, for this year's scheme return that we submitted during October time. And um, together with the, the three schemes, the 92, 2006 and 2015 schemes, um, members may recall that the data is split into two categories. Um, there's the common data and the scheme-specific data. Um, so just as a reminder, the common data are things like name, date of birth, national insurance number, things unique to that in the, in, um, um, member. And then the scheme specific conditional data is um, information like um, if, if, if members are transferred pensions in, um, AVC benefits, divorce um, arrangements held within the system that so that they, they are their, their information, it is data that um, you would use in the calculation of benefits that scheme specific so hopefully members will see from the the two tables both back in 2019 and again in 2020 that um our compliance against the data scores is is is, is very good and yeah. we will continue to work on our um uh those areas where potentially we still have a few gaps um, to continue to develop those um, throughout the year. If I move on to uh, the next table down there, member self-serve statistics. Um, so those provide the updated statistics uh, to the 21st of December. We'll see in the um, status when active members, so those are... Um, um, our firefighters now that 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 are, um, are active members. Uh, there's a high level of compliance there, 83 percent on scheme scheme 90. So so um, many of the active members are signed up to um, member self serve, which is which is really positive. Um, on the pensioner side, it's 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 a little bit lower, but we hope over time, as as more of the active members move into uh, the, a, a, a pension pensioner status, that this will this is something that will grow over time. In relation to scheme member complaints, uh, just to note for board that there are no formal complaints to to report uh, this period. And some other key activity that um, I just wanted to um, flag up to board really was around the pension saving statements for 2019-20, uh, which were issued to support the annual allowance exercise that we've that we've discussed uh, mm -hmm. at board previously. Um, 
We followed that up with um, an agreement um, with Alison and the team to run some annual allowance pension training and awareness session, which was held on the 26th of October for, for those relevant officers. And um, we're currently working, I'm saying supporting um, scheme pays process following this tax allowance. Um, so again, to remind members that um, the tax self-assessment exercises for individuals needs to need to be filed before the 31st of January 2021. Um, if members have exceeded their annual allowance, there is an option there um, for scheme pays to actually pay the tax over rather than the individual. But all this, all the paperwork and supporting information needs to be resolved prior to the 31st of January. So, so during the, during the, 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 the minutes being issued and, um, um, obviously now we've been working with um, some officers to, to ensure that that element has, has, has been concluded. Uh, and, and finally, it's just a, just to keep a watching brief really on the McLeod um, issue that we will all all aware of and, and potentially, well not potentially, the implications of that um, both from costing perspective and really from the administration side, putting things right retrospectively. Um, so that, that, that's a watching brief still on, on, on that issue. Um, and I'll pause there, Chair, and happy to take any questions from members. Yes, I'll give you an, I was going to bring up the McLeod uh, because you know, that's implications for everybody, really. So uh, nothing, nothing new on that at all, nothing through yet, anything at all. No, nothing to see, to see that, Chair. Oh. Um, I've got an update to give uh, a bit later on, but the headline is there's no further news on it at the moment. Right, that's good. Good. Members, got any questions? Chair, yeah, Louise, yes. Sorry, sorry, did you say me or Val? Louise, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, the, the compliance levels uh, seem to be um, very good. Um, I was just looking at page um, 10, Appendix 1, um, and it says percentage retirements from active membership processed within five days. And there are a couple of ones that seem to fall below um, in June and also in August, and um, it says no cases completed. Just wondered if you could explain how that uh, system works, and presumably within five days is working days, is it, on all of these tables, as opposed to five calendar days or ten calendar days? Okay. Yeah, 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 thank you. The, the, yeah, the, the, they, they would be uh, working days um, with it, within there. Um, in terms of the historic ones, and I, and, and I think that's what's important, that we provide this table so you can so you can see over time, I think initially we were just providing a, sing a single month, depending on when the, um, but, but, but depending on when the boards um, were scheduled. But that mm. doesn't give members the full picture, really, in terms of well, what does that what does that work out to over a full year? There was some activity during that period, and there were some sort of complex cases that we did have to work through with the service. Um, uh, and and they did take uh, a little longer in terms of in terms of those issues. So we were aware of them at the time, and we worked through them. But but really, it's as an overall monitoring process. It, it's right, yes, that we that that we show and we do flag when when we don't meet those targets. But you know, we we have to set those service standards, and those service standards are our expectations. But there will be circumstances sometimes where we will fall outside of those. It's just understanding well why was that the case at the time, and I know within that period there there were a few cases there um, um, that um, were more complex in terms of how we how how we. Um, calculated the benefit which which did push us over that over that time limit is it could i just ask a second question chair 
Um, is the compliance 100% or 90% on the uh, key performance indicators? Um, f for the target, sorry, or the... Well, on um, the tables on Appendix 1, we've obviously got, um, you know, different percentages of compliance with the key performance indicators. And I just wondered whether, um, uh, I mean, quite a number of them are 100%, which is great. But I just wondered um, whether or not the sort of target level was 90% or 100%. If 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 you look at the table where it says so the so the first column there says target one hundred percent but intervention oh, target 100%, so, yeah sorry yeah sorry. and then we've got intervention sort of ninety ninety five percent so so that so we do have an intervention level where we would expect to to look at to look at but because of the the numbers that we're dealing here obviously we do look at every case if we don't meet the target there isn't. There isn't a case that we wouldn't look at, given the numbers that we that, we, that we're looking at you. So when we, um, our expectation is to meet the hundred um, percent, but on occasions that 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 isn't going to happen. And, and yeah. as long as we understand that why that hasn't happened in those circumstances, then we're able to learn from that. We're able to develop. Well, you know, if that type of circumstance comes again, is there something different we can do? Uh, but it's, we still feel it's important to set those challenging um, service service targets. Good, Val. Thank you again for that. Yeah, Val. Yeah, well, um, my question has almost been answered because it was the the term intervention that sort of threw me um, Monday morning, Sunday evening. I don't know, but you've explained that, Ian, now um, because. Looking at the 100% target, okay, and then there was the intervention of 95, and I found myself thinking, well, if there are no cases completed, how on earth can you have a 95 um, mm. intervention? But yeah. um, that's become a little bit clearer to me. Yeah. The question that Louise asked as well, no, I think I'm happy here now, Chairman. Um, the, 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 you read something and it doesn't <coughs> seem to register, and then it does. So thank you, Ian. Right. right. Thank you, Val. Thank you. Yeah. Louise, you want mumble, to come back in? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to ask a further question. Would it be, because obviously 100% depends on how many people you, you're talking about, because um, if you've only got two people and one complies and the other doesn't, then it, it puts the figures down um, to 50%, for example. So I just wonder yeah. if it would be helpful in the tables if you put in brackets the number of um, cases and then it would give us a Clearer yeah. idea of what the percentages mean, if that's possible. Yeah, I, I think we tried to in the, in the comments field towards the end yeah. of the table. So we try and write in there where there are cases. So, that, so for example, on that page 10, uh, second one down, divorce, divorce is there. Yes. You can see three cases completed all on time in the yeah. comments. Yeah. And that's something that we added in just purely on that basis, really, just to give you a flavour of of numbers and volumes. Um, the table was this this table and service standards, they, they are an exact mirror of what the, the, the table we provide for local government, uh, the local government scheme. And, and we have so many numbers um, going through on, 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 on the cases. This is how we've developed it for that suite. So whether it whether it completely matches your requirements, I'm open to suggestions. If there is, if there is any further sort of clarity, members, members need in there. But, but that's something we thought was helpful to as as well to include numbers in there so that you get a feel for uh, the numbers undertaken in that period, and that's only in that specific period. So in the November period, that would have been the the numbers on the end. I'm, I'm quite happy with that because, like, we get if we get more figures, we're going to get more. I, I'm going to get more confused anyway. Because I found it's going to take a lot for, to confuse me lately. I tell you what, now. <laughs> yeah. um, I became confused, Chairman, reading um, the, the, um, the reference then to the divorce estimates, moving across the statement, the target 100%, 90% intervention, and then moving across, you've got nil or 100, but. 
the uh, final comments was three cases, and I found that a little bit difficult to reconcile with the hundreds and the nils. But okay. it's beginning to make more sense. I'm sorry to be yeah. Thinking. No, that's 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 my my fault. Not perhaps not clarifying the 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 elements within the table and what they should have meant, and and, and perhaps that's what I should have started for um, for members. But the idea of that final element table there is to provide the number of cases yes. just purely in the latest month. So not for the whole, not since April. We we're just looking at individual months so that. So that members can see over time, then in yeah. that in that period, um, what's happening, and and then the v the very final one, then the yes. twenty twenty to twenty one year to date, that's a cumulative percentage. So that we're looking at overall numbers then from the start of the year to the end of the year, and how that impacts over time. So where we are underperforming. So if we look at the one. Um, Retirements from active membership within yes, five yes, days. Yes. So, yes. so over the year, it's seventy-eight point five percent. So what we would be looking for is an improvement on that because where we right. where we did dip in June, July, and August on those on those cases yes. that we were aware of, that we are improving or at least trying to improve and and pull back that position, but to, by the end of the year. So that's the idea of that column. No, that that's fine. That clarifies a lot in my mind. Thank you very much. Is everybody happy with that? Union members, you happy with that? Yes, with happy. Steve, yes, Steve, yep. yep. Okay, so is everybody yep. happy with that report? The recommendations of the recommendations there that members of the pension board note the performance data. So everybody's happy with that. Can yes. I ask you a question, Chairman? Yes, yes. You're going to bless me. Last but one item on the second table: percentage transfers old out processed within ten days monthly. And at the end of that, I just searched for my curiosity. There were two cases completed on time. And the question was why? Why are they transferred out? Was there any particular reason? Um, you couldn't tell me. No, it, other than it being an option, obviously, to um, uh, to the individual member, they do have the option, obviously, yes. to yes, tra right. transfer out. Um, so it depends on the circumstances there. They may have left the service or something, and there's a transfer there that... Yes. Um, no, oh, so, so, that so that's what that is, yeah. Yeah, I know what my thinking was when I read that, was was this people transferring out of a pension system completely? You know where it's obligatory to uh, register in a pension scheme now? You have to yes. enroll, but then you can actually opt out. And the thought you, that went through my mind were these opt out or whatever, only two cases, yeah. but presumably not, not, yeah. it's tied to schemes within the authority. Um, it, 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 it may be um, people obviously uh, members can transfer out if they meet various uh, requirements and they've taken financial advice um, through through freedoms that that, that sometimes um, members may may choose that that doesn't happen very often in terms of members transferring out to, to uh, yeah. From a def defined benefit scheme, our scheme is still a very good scheme, oh, no, and think, yeah. we wouldn't I was expect more of the um, youngsters coming into employment and then transferring. But it's okay; you no. clarified that for me. Thanks very much. Ian. Thank you. Okay. So, yep. members have all agreed. Sally, do you want yes, to do a room call on that, or, 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 or what? I'm happy. I can see all the members, providing they show hands to say they agree. Yes. Yep. Yes. Yep. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Ian, for that. We want thank to write item number six on page 13. Alison? Yeah, thank you, Chair. So, um, members will know that we've been developing uh, the Members Handbook, which we're um, hoping is a good source of information to support each of you in um, your own knowledge, skills, and understanding um, of fire pensions and your own individual roles as members of this board. Um, you should have had as attached as an annex to this paper the complete members handbook 
um, which is now available for your information. Mm -hmm. um, what I propose we do is we uh, undertake a very quick review, perhaps on an annual basis of this document, just to make sure it's got the current links and information in there. So um, I propose that we diarise this probably for a year from now, just to check in that um, it's still current and relevant. Um, so I'm happy to take any feedback, comments, thoughts, um, but I think that uh, that task of pulling together the Member's Handbook is probably now complete. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that, Alison. Uh, yes, I think in January would be the best time to review it, yes, on a yearly basis. Any other members got any, any uh, thoughts on it? Um, not uh, not a question as to what it contains, Jim, but I was curious, I meant to ask last time when we were looking at this, Alison, um, on page 39, there's a reference there to investment performance. Now, in that the, um, this pension fund doesn't have an investment system, what's, well, what investment is it referring to? And bullet uh, num point number eight on page 40, the actuarial methods, standards and practices, the fund actuary. Well, we don't have a fund. Or oh, perhaps we do that I'm blissfully unaware of. So I don't know if anybody can answer that one for me. Sure, it's a notional fund, so there is an actuary because, because the actuarial requirements around calculating employer and employee contributions remain intact even though it's only a notional fund there is still a requirement for obviously okay. the employer and employee to pay contributions to for their pensions yeah, so in that sense sense. there is a requirement to run a fund yeah thank you common sense thank you <laughs> i'm fine with it chairman and thank you very much you're right. you're right you're right chair though uh, councillor smith is right there are no actual investments in the true sense of uh, pension fund investments yeah, yeah but okay. you still got to do some calculating thank you <laughs> okay so we go for the recommendations uh, for that and we do the, the review in the tournament's time in january okay everybody happy with that yes yep yep, yep. Brilliant, thank you ever so much. Next one on page 15, item number seven. Again, Alison, for you. Yeah, thank you, Chair. So, um, as members know, we've been undertaking a training needs analysis um, of uh, skills and knowledge against uh, the headline training framework that we set. Um, so, what, what we're now starting to do is work through the areas of development, um, the, the output of the TNA exercise confirmed that we've got a spread of um, differing levels of knowledge and understanding. So what, what we've um, agreed to do is to do a almost a sort of baseline um, knowledge, skills, understanding piece at every meeting. So what I thought would be helpful from an audit perspective is if we just start to capture um, the uh, topic of di discussion or uh, upskilling for each session in a paper, then that would lead us into the uh, the presentation. Um, and for this session, Ian Trailer is going to take the lead for us. Um, the area that I've pulled out is section H, if you look at appendix one, which is the role of advisors and key persons. Um, and under this header, where, where I want us to focus for this session is the role of RCT pensions in terms of being our administrator. So um, a little bit about the SLA that we've got agreed, the responsibilities from a, a, an RCT pensions perspective and um, picking up the discretions that we uh, signed off as a fire authority last year and now sit with RCT in order to support them making decisions around pensions. So. Um, by way of uh, the recommendations in here, if you're happy with that approach, I suggest that um, we agree this as a, as a framework for going forward, and then we'll move into the training session that Ian will lead. Yes, I'm happy with that. On that point of the, of the, of the, of the audit, uh, Alison, as David is a new member and he, he has got experience of pensions, could you send David the, that questionnaire that we all had 
so David could fill it in so you're aware of, of his knowledge as well. Yeah, thank you, Chair. I forgot to mention that. Um, I had a chat with David last week around his role, um, but we are following up with the relevant paperwork, so thank you. I'll do that. Okay, thank you so much. Is that okay, David? Yep. And you're in. Never mind. Okay, then. So over to you, then, Ian. Thank you, Chair. Um, just just to provide, I, I guess, a bit of context here, um, Rhonda Kenantaf is the third party uh, administra administrator to the fire service in respect of the pension benefits. And I've been looking back, and this is a, a long standing relationship. Um, that we've had now for a number of years, and it's certainly pre 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 eighties and has has gone back some time further than that even. Um, so it's a long standing relationship. We have um, a team in place that um, provides um, local government benefit expertise, but also. Um, um, a dedicated team provi providing um, fire service, which is which is relevant in this context. Um, that team um, attend various forums uh, and and working groups throughout the year in respect of fire to ensure that they maintain their knowledge and clarity around legislation. Um, and, and skills as, as knowledge, pretty much as, as obviously fire, um, fire board are, are, are doing today. Um, so it's important with the various changes that happen over the years that, that we, we maintain our own um, in-house expertise in this regard. In, it, with regard to the relationship, we've agreed a service level agreement uh between ourselves, between the parties, which helps to define the areas of responsibilities and those expectations on both parties. Um, there are a number of headings. I, I, I won't go through in detail the SLA. Um, I believe, Alison, that the board members have seen the SLA, and, and if not, perhaps worth, worth sharing. I'm sure you have seen the SLA in terms of the, the actual details. But, but, but I suppose some, some specific activity within there that I'd just draw out really is the role of, of us as administrator. I think one of the key roles really is, is supporting pension board around, um, um, their governance and sort of scrutiny role within within this pension world, really. So it's it's important that we provide this support. Hence, my, myself coming along to uh, pension pension boards as part of that activity. Um, another key key role of the administrator would be um, around clearly member benefits. So it's important that we maintain accurate and appropriate records to enable benefits to the to our members and our scheme beneficiaries um, we mentioned earlier around the, the important plot part that data provides to that and accurate data um, so data is key in terms of holding people's nominations sharing orders pension debits we mentioned scheme pays when somebody can pay tax um, so having that accurate record there so, so that the, the pension may, may not come into uh, pay, payment until 20 years down the line. So it's important that we have that accurate trail over a long period of time for that pension data. So that's the kind of information we uh, record and maintain around pension benefits. We apply, apply the pension annual uh, increase when there is one. Um, in relation to the benefits, we run a pensioner payroll on behalf of the service, um, obviously paying our scheme mem members monthly, um, issuing P60s annually when that's, when, when that's relevant and, um, uh, pay, paying lump sum payments, um, to our fire service members, um, when they come to retirement. So there's some key activity 
around there that ourselves as administrators undertake on behalf of fire service. So that that's one of the key elements of our roles. Probably one of the more supporting elements is around member communication. So again, we mentioned the positive um, platform we've put in place around member self-serve, and it's important that we encourage our membership to um, go online and see their information for themselves in relation in relation to their uh, membership information. We provide annual benefit statements. Now, we're required to provide annual benefit statements on an annual basis, so that's something we do um, um, working closely with the team there at FIRE to make sure we have the, the information recorded. Um, we... Um, provide the pension tax statements as part of the communication to um, around the annual allowances. And and again, we provide targeted training in agreement with Alison and the team around um, specific areas, the most recent being obviously the, the annual allowance one, which I mentioned earlier. The service at level agreement also sets out those service standards. So again, the tables that we've discussed earlier and gone through, we, at the start of setting up the um, um, the SLA, we would have sat down with uh, Alison and the team and agreed those service standards based on industry sort of standards or expectations on of turnaround days. Um, and discuss where we need to pitch those and where we need to pitch those targets and our expectations. Um, there's um, some work clearly we do on, fire, on behalf of FIRE in relation to the regulator, and um, we provide uh, an annual return to the regulator scheme return, providing information. We have to include uh, members, uh, board members within that within that information, and um, again we provide our data quality and our membership numbers. So that's an annual scheme return that we we undertake on behalf of the fire service. Um, we also um, provide valuation data. I know there's a comment earlier around um, valuation, and the, and there's still as indicated, there is still an exercise, albeit it's it's an unfunded scheme. There is still a valuation exercise, and therefore um, we provide data in respect of um, and some of that. There are um, it is a complex scheme, as 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 no doubt we're we're all aware, and has um, changed a number of times, and it's uh, it, it's certainly difficult to um, um, keep track sometimes of all these these changes, but clearly important when it comes to um, making pen, pension benefits that we have a system in place. Um, so we so we work with the system provider to ensure that they um, keep up to date in relation to those regulation changes and the cal calculations are um, adequate to meet the um, accurate accurate payment benefits. Um, the only the only final one I think I was going to raise was around. Um, if you just bear with me a minute, is around. My screen's just decided to jump off. Po apologies a minute. Um, was around the discretion side, um, as Alison uh, mentioned, um, there are discretions that that are allowable within the scheme, and we work closely with Alison and, and the team around those discretions in terms of how how those are applied and consistently apply, applied across the service, which is important. There is an appeal process. Um, so when decisions are made, if members are um, 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 which to challenge and appeal that process, there is a formal process that takes place and um, Alison and the team would get involved 
in those uh, appeal processes. So that, that that's all I was going to raise um, without going into too much detail, but I'd certainly encourage members and, and, and new members certainly to um, look at the SLA um, in detail, um, which would certainly um, set out the responsibilities of of both parties and those expectations, and hopefully, hopefully provides board members with the reassurance that um, there is a close relationship there between both parties, and we're both aware and accountable for for those responsibilities that we've set out in the SLA. So, that's, if I if I could pause there, Chair, and that's all I was going yeah, happy to take any questions it's, it was just a quick quick overview really of of responsibilities yeah thank you again for that excuse me, this little cat she is she wants to live this morning terrible she does i don't know what's wrong with her this morning you know thank you i got a question uh out of, out of curiosity we've got the sla with you ian and i i understand if you can't say this but how many staff do do you uh employed from RCT then for uh, us as uh, looking after the pensions and for uh, for us in the fire service. Um, for the, for the fire service, there chair there are three um, individuals that have um, I would say fire experience within within there. We have the broader and wider team that can support that as there are similarities across the services but we have we have three individuals obviously supported by the senior people within the service as well so there's um 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 within there um and I'm not including the payroll side of it there there's a there's there's a payroll arm that obviously does the the payroll side of it but that's that's part of our Ronda Ken and Taft's payroll team um, um, sorts that out so but in terms of the expertise of um, fire transactions and um, regulations there are there are there I would say there are there are three supported by the um, senior management team oh that's brilliant thank you so much any members got any questions Louise yeah. Yeah, thank you. Um, having done um, this um, training uh, pack, um, I just wondered about the question of um, backup of, of the data that you've got on, on the different members' schemes, because um, obviously with home working, you know, there might be a temptation not to back it up as often as you would have if you were office based and i just wondered um you know is it backed up on a on, on a weekly basis uh, or or what happens um you know obviously it is it is important um to ensure that you've still got all of the information because a, a lot of it is um is no longer paper based but is um is on the uh, computer so um could you um give some reassurance with regard to that I mean, the reason I'm asking that question is my husband's working at home quite a lot now and he had a a bug in his office and had to reload office. And since then, he's backed up all of his uh, information, um, you know, as a, as a result and is regularly updating it just in case that sort of thing happens again. And I just wondered if you were doing the same thing on a, on a weekly basis. Thank you. Yeah, that, that 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 that's that's fine and a, and, a, and a valid question there in in relation to business uh, resilience and, and and continuity. We do have a business continuity plan in place uh, which covers the service and and in fact uh, I, I would say we've we've <laughs> we've gone live on that business continu uh, continuity plan as, as of last last March. Um, all our staff are currently working from home. Um, and they're able to do those transactions and communications and helpline and everything from home. We've 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 set that up. In terms in terms of the um, data and membership data, the system that we use and have used now 
again for for a number of years in in relation to um, both the local government scheme and the fire scheme um, is hosted by um, a third party so we have that we have that arrangement in place so they it's in it's held in a in a data center and is backed up daily in a separate location data center um, so we have all the securities in place around the data around data um, um, you know data um, security regulations and everything so data protection regulations all that's covered off as part of the arrangement but the data itself is accessed um, it isn't held um, on on the Ken and Taft servers it's held in a it's held in a major data cent- center in the UK and that's backed up in a separate UK data center um, in the UK. Again, really, you know, I, as I mentioned, valid question to ask because this data is so significant these days to make sure you have those um, backup and security um, processes in play, in play to protect that information. Um, so I would... I, there is a cost to that, and the, the the system that we use is isn't isn't expensive. Um, it, it is an expensive system, but um, given the importance of um, what we hold and what it's used for, and how long that information needs to be maintained when we talk in pension 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 data, it's. Um, we think it's it's value for money, and 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 um, that's our option there. So hopefully that provides you with the reassurance that that data is secure and and backed up. But it's backed up daily. So yeah, I think uh, so. Really, effectively, um, is the sort of like three sets of data: the local one, the um, where you saw the data, and, and where it's backed up as well. Is that is that is is effectively? You know, I was just thinking if, for example. Um, the central data one had a had a problem, um, you know, because every computer system on occasions ha- has problems. Yeah. Are we talking about sort of three sets of data? In other words, your local one, um, the data one, and then um, their backup system as well. Yeah, it, the, the, there isn't a local one. Um, basically, what we're doing is logging in, so the, so that so even the, our member self served it. So it, it, even our individual members through that through our member self serve when they when they log in they are being pushed to a portal to this data this data secure data warehouse where and that's how our officers log into that as well so it's not held locally it's all held in this warehouse that is copied daily to another separate location um, if there is an issue with the one location, we can switch to the other. So there's the, that's where that disaster recovery comes in, and we have um, we have turnaround times um, built into some some of that in terms of um, if if the system went down at this particular site, you know we de- expect that backup within so many hours at the other site. So okay, that so we have that relationship. So the information's not local; it's held. It's held in yeah. its. We access the information. I suppose that's probably the same local government as well. Yeah. As long as it's not held in the foreign countries, so, so, it's okay. Yeah. It's not. It's no. not. Chair. It's, no, it's, 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 it's UK. Yeah, I know that. <coughs> Thank yes, you. Yeah. Anybody else? Have, yes. 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 Um, only an approximate um, number, Ian. How many? That's your phone. <laughs> how, how many cases or accounts do you actually handle on behalf of the fire authority, Ian? No, not a, you know, absolutely out of Approximately how many cases, you know, the ones that are ongoing, the ones that are investigated, the things that are coming forward for the future pensions-wise? So how many cases approximately? <sighs> um... Approximate? I, I I think in terms of our membership, obviously we've got um, overall membership of around um, was it um, one thousand? Is it one thousand? 
900 in terms of um, overall membership. But it depends really in the pension world of of how many cases come come through. There might be some 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 more activity. Um, I know at the start, obviously, of this meeting, we there was there was a mention of some some, some deaths, sadly, ar- around some of this COVID yeah. stuff. So we will have um, no doubt some additional cases coming through as as a result of that, but. It can, it can vary really in terms of what what activity is there. Obviously, if there are divorce cases or whatever, it it, it can change. It can mm-hmm. vary, so you can't can't really look put a number on it other than perhaps some of the activity that you see, you know, through the through the service standard. So they're yeah. not they're not huge numbers. Um, yeah, looking think- back up to the nov- November, we had twenty five cases on pensions preserve benefits process so um so in that period in november we had we had we we, for some reason we did have a peak of preserve preserve benefits so it depends really um it it can vary yeah it can vary that you know every pension is ongoing isn't it um a pension you are handling until sadly somebody passes on and then presumably the system is picking it up for the widow or whatever. Yeah. And I just thought it must be a huge number that, what you say, a backlog, the existing ones that are there, the ones that are active and the problematic ones. You've got a tremendous workload there, which I had not really appreci- thought about probably. Just thought, okay, actively we employ so many thousand people, pensions, whatever. But there's a huge backlog behind that that you're managing yeah, um, I, I think sometimes, obviously, there's there there, there are some periods that you, we don't have to do anything for those members, and they just, obviously, yes, we are paying them. So there is a pro, there is a process that sits behind behind that, but that's you know that's fairly automated once we've got those in payment. But yes, when something does happen, and 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 you know we they sadly pass away we have we we have the tell us one service that people can report um yeah. if, if somebody sadly passed away so all that comes into play then and filters through the service so we've got all those processes set up behind to hopefully ensure that the beneficiaries are paid paid as soon as possible as well so that's it is um it is it is a it is a it is a significant undertaking, but hopefully, you know, we've resourced to manage those levels of service and um you know, we 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 certainly um do the best for our membership membership um in regards to that. And I tell you what was nice to hear then was your reference to the Tellers One, because a lot of people are not aware of that system and it's good that we are. So thank you very much. Thank you. I'm awful sorry to leave you for a couple of seconds. That was my 94-year-old uncle knocking my door for recycling bags. So I'm awful sorry. <laughs> I did tell him to come at one o'clock, but uh, at 94, you can't tell him what to do, can you? So he's fitter than me, you tell him that now. Yeah. Anybody else got any questions on that? Nope. Well, thank you, Ian. That, that's very enlightening. That is very much so. Yes, excellent. Okay. Thank Everyone's you, happy with that, yes? Yes, Brilliant. yes. Okay, so we go. The next item, I lost my papers now that my cats have moved them around to me. So we're on to Alison in the next one for you. The, the, uh, on page 21, item number nine. Yeah, thank you, Chair. So this okay. is the, uh, the pensions consultation and the outcome of um, the McLeod Sergeant case. So I, I think there's two things going on here. The first one is we know that Treasury have now closed their public consultation on public sector pensions. And as a fire and rescue service and a fire authority, we submitted an employer's response to that consultation, which you each provided feedback on. Um, That's now gone into the Treasury policy machine. um, And so I'm expecting that we'll hear uh, from Treasury um, around uh, February time in terms of what the outcome of that consultation looks like. Um, The second thing that that we're all um, awaiting an update on is the uh, 
employment tribunal that was held in December, which related to um, whether fire and rescue authorities have the legal powers to implement the outcome of the December 2018 Court of Appeal hearing around transitional protections in relation to the immediate detriment to people. So um, we haven't heard back. Um, I, I know the ET was held in December um, and we're awaiting the outcome of that um, judgment any minute now. Um, I, I think we were expecting it in the last few weeks, uh, but it hasn't come out as yet. Um, so for that one, I think it's a watching brief. And once we get the outcome of that, um, we'll know whether we can now proceed to implement um, the immediate detriment cases um, or whether we have to um, await any further hearing around, um, uh, you know, what the next steps are in terms of powers to, to enable that um, activity to proceed. Um, so that's where we're at. We're, we're slightly in limbo, I guess, in that um, the Treasury consultation has not reported yet. It usually takes, I, I would probably say, around four months or so for Treasury to um, review all of the, the items of feedback and then start to translate that into a policy uh, paper and decision. Um, and then we've got the ET outcome on legal powers um, for FRAs to start to implement the decisions that came out of the Court of Appeal in 2018. Um, so uh, that's where we're at. Um, obviously, as, as soon as we know about the December last year ET outcome, um, I will alert LPB members as soon as we get that, that response. Um, but for now, I think it's, that's as much as I can say. Right, thank you, Alison. It, it's, it's just frustrating that nobody knows what's going on, and it's not fair on on the on the people who've got the appeals and whatever. It's it's, it's just dragging out all the time. Just wish they would sort this out once and for all, so everybody knows where we are with it. You know. Yeah. Yeah, that we agree, Chair. And um, Ian and I have had a couple of conversations around this because, of course, we we need to um, put steps in place to ensure that once we know, you know, once we we're given the green light we are able to, um, you know, proceed with pace yeah, um, to implement the outcomes. So, yeah, we're, we're frustrated as well. Yeah, it's, it's, it's awful. So anybody ask any more questions for that? Nope. Anybody? Nope. No. Okay. That's brilliant. Thank you ever so much for that. The forward working programme, Alison? Yeah, sorry, so we... Go on, yeah. sorry, I can't look at the one. My old cat has decided to lie on the paper, so I can't see it now. So I take your word for what you're saying to me. <laughs> okay, so um, thank you, Chair. So we've now completed the um, the remainder of the year's activity. I think um, we'll now start to work on the program for next year, and I think there's a couple of things that I will probably flag now to, to weave into that program. So. Um, We've already talked about the Member's Handbook review. I think probably we'd want to bring the SLA back for a little look um, because we, we, we will no doubt be renewing that SLA in, in uh, line with our existing governance arrangements as a service. So um, I'll, I'll include those two additional items for the next municipal year, if that's OK. Yes, I'm happy with that. My card has moved now so I can see it. Right. Yep. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Anything else? Everything nothing more from me. Yes, it did. Okay. I'm, there's nothing more from me. So thank you ever so much, everybody, for attending. And we'll see you all at the next meeting. Thank you ever so much. And sorry for the interruptions of my, my cats. I, I, I suppose there are four, but the other one, my sister got the other one today. So I'm lucky, lucky she's not the other one because she is mad. She's mad than the other ones. So thank you ever so much, everybody. I'll see you all around. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Bye, Bye. 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 Bye